everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. Today I am putting that 1850s dress project on hold for just a week to get in some fall sewing. Now I have been talking about this project in honestly most of my recent videos, but in case you are not aware, I am making a Gunny Sacks inspired dress today. If you were around my channel last fall and winter, like of 2021, you will know that I made a few Gunny Sacks dresses on this channel and I have just absolutely loved wearing them so much. Like they are the most fun thing to wear, honestly. And I wanted another one. Now, the weather has decided to kind of thwart my plans because my plan for this dress was to make a fall theme dress as opposed to just a like gunny saxoween Halloween dress like I did last year, but to make a fall themed dress that I could wear throughout, you know, September, which I know is already over, October and November, you know, until we get into winter basically, or frankly all year because I wear my fall themed stuff all year. It's 81 degrees today. I'm filming this on September 27th to start this out. And the forecast for the next 10 days is filled with days that are around 80 to 81 degrees. So I don't know when I'm actually going to get to wear this dress, which is unfortunate and annoying. But again, I wear pumpkin stuff all year. So you know what? If I am wearing pumpkins in February, that's just how it's going to be because I do intend to make this a long sleeve dress. However, I do have an idea of how to potentially get some wear in it before I add long sleeves. I'll get to that in a minute. So let me first show you the fabrics for this dress and then I will also talk about my design plans for this dress as well. So the fabrics are from Joann's. Now, if you're familiar with gunny sacks, it's usually a lot of different like cotton fabrics that are all kind of pushed together and made together into one dress. I am primarily using two fabrics for this dress. This is the main fabric that I'm going to be using. So you can see lots of pumpkins, sunflowers. I just thought it was really, really cute. And these little gold dots are like just a hint of sparkle which I really love. And then to go with this, I am going to be using this orangey fabric that has kind of a little plus sign design on it. And this is going to be my contrast fabric because I thought they just go so, so well together. And I also really like orange. So to me, this is like very autumnal and I'm a big fan. Now, some gunny socks dresses could have even more patterns as well, but I have found in the course of making my three last year that I do prefer to keep it to like two and just use this in strategic places throughout the dress. While I'm talking about fabrics though, I do actually want to mention the sponsor for today's video, who is Brooklinen. Now I have been seeing ads on a lot of other people's videos for Brooklinen sheets, which are gorgeous, luxurious sheets. And I got the Lux Sateen and Washed Linen Sheets. And I've been so, so curious to try the linen sheets, having seen them all over in other YouTube ads. So in case you're not aware, linen is just a very, very breathable fabric. And so these linen sheets, they breathe. I mean, we've been having all of these hot days, hot nights, and I have these sheets on my bed and I'm not waking up overheated. And I'm just like, how is this even possible? So yes, I am truly loving them. Dora is loving these Brooklinen sheets and I really want you to love these Brooklinen sheets as well. So go click the link down in my description and use my discount code LadyRebecca20 to save $20 off of your first purchase of $100 or more. And they actually have bundles where you can get the fitted and flat sheets and basic pillowcases plus two extra pillowcases and the duvet cover all together, all in one bundle. And you can mix and match all of your different colors. And they even let me mix and match textures so that I have a luxe sateen duvet cover so that everything still looks very nice and smooth on top. And then I have these gorgeous linen sheets underneath and I am just loving them so much. And I really think that you will too. So definitely go use my code LadyRebecca20 and click the link down in the description and shop for your own Brooklinen sheets today. That's enough about fabrics types though. Let's talk more about the design of this project. 
So I'm going with a design that is kind of similar-ish to the one that I did my winter gunny socks, which I think I called my snow gunny <laughs> dress last year. I don't have a cute pun for this fall one, so if you can think of one, leave it in the comments. All I've got so far is like pumpkin socks, and I feel like that could go wrong really easily and it just doesn't really sound right, so yeah, if you think of one, let me know. But in any case, I'm going kind of with a style similar to this, except that the center panel, I'm planning to make orange and I'm going to do a faux lacing detail over the center panel so that it kind of looks a little bit corsety. And then I am planning to do the sleeves as the contrast and the contrast band down at the bottom down here and Probably that's it for the contrast. Maybe some contrast detail around the neckline because I think I did that on my Christmas one and it worked out really cute. So I might do that as well. But as I mentioned before, what I'm thinking of doing for like this video, <laughs> because it's still so warm, is making the full dress without the sleeves and like finishing the edge of the sleeves or possibly if I have enough fabric, doing a little short sleeve that can be easily removable and wearing it for the time being as either a short sleeve or a jumper dress and then adding the long sleeves on later if we actually finally get some fall weather happening in the Pacific Northwest where it's not supposed to be this hot. So yeah, that's my plan. Um, I am going to try and pull out the pattern that I had used for this but if you watched my summer dress video from a few weeks ago, you will know that I realized that that wound up very close, I think, to my gunny sucks dresses. So I'm going to compare those two patterns, see where they differ. I think the main difference is how wide the center part is right here, and I do want a narrower center part. So I'm going to compare those patterns, see how they differ, and then decide which one I'm going to use. Ideally, I'd like to be able to do the mock-up just out of like the lining fabric because I think those should be close enough. So let's go ahead and get sewing. So I actually decided that I wanted to work on the skirt first and then the bodice just to kind of like get a lot of that fabric out of the way and allow the skirt to hang on the dress form ideally uh, at least overnight before attaching it to the bodice and worrying about the hem and all of those other things that you have to worry about with skirts. So I wanted to talk about how I make these skirts for these gunny sacks dresses. I have addressed this in at least the gunny sacks a ween video but since it's been just about a year since that video came out I figured I would do it again. So these skirts, this is three fifths of one, they are made of five panels and they are gourd panels. So each panel is 20 inches across at the top and it's the full width of the fabric at the bottom, which I think is something like 44 inches, something like that. And the way that I assemble them is that I take three panels and put them all together side by side. And then on the sides of that, I put the pocket bags because these will wind up being about like one and a half inches behind the side seam. So it'll sit about here, but it was like the closest and most sensible place for a pocket to go because I like to do inseam pockets. In the back, there are another two panels and these I have open at the center for about like nine inches, I think, and that will be where the center back opening will be, which has an invisible zipper. I was hoping I could get away without doing a zipper in this, but I did notice that two out of my three gunny sacks dresses from last year, and it's the later two that I made, they have zippers. So there's probably a reason for that. I think it's because it has a slightly smaller neckline, and obviously I want it fitted at the waist, so I am intending to do a zipper, which of course means that I have to go to Joanne's tomorrow to get said zipper, because I don't have one, and didn't think about that when I bought the fabric. Anyway, these two pieces are assembled together, and again, they have the pocket bags on the sides as well. So now what happens is I'm going to press all of these seams, and then the back sides will go and get attached to the front sides, making the pocket bags, etc. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to gather all around the waist and just like pin it to the dress form to hang out overnight. I don't remember how much these tend to droop on the seams because that's what happens. This is a bias and it tends to stretch. So I don't remember from last year if I'm going to have to cut off any excess, but I'm going to give it time to fall in any case. 
And then once that happens, then there will be an applied band of the orangey fabric below that. And then I also have ruffles that I've already made, well, partially made. I have cut them out and I've steamed them together right here. And these will need to get hemmed and gathered and then attached to that orange band at the bottom to finish off the skirt. But since these are all straight panels, they're seven and three quarter inches wide and they are the full width of the fabric. And there are 10 of them, two per upper section, basically two per gourd section. Because these are straight, they will not drop or anything. So it is the job of this to get leveled before this can get attached or the band can get attached to all of that. So this will be a tomorrow or, you know, the next day type thing, depending on when I decide to do the bodice. And in the meantime, this is going to get done and hung on the dress form tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting that together and stick it on there so that it can drop for tomorrow. Okay, so these patterns are actually way more different than I remembered. Just to compare, this is the center front right here. So you can see that the original gunny sacks that's underneath it's a lot taller for one thing, um, but also like the curve over here is very different. Hopefully you can see the sheerness through this. The curve is just very, very different in these two. And this one from the summer dress winds up being a lot wider, which is really not what I want. I do want this look right here. And then likewise here, the gunny sacks is again smaller, so I'm really not sure how that is working other than the fact that summer dress did wind up a little bit large but yeah the gunny sacks is the one on top in this case and like the side is pretty the same but this is kind of the biggest thing right here is that this had already curved over which to be honest I kind of like because I feel like it would kind of make a nice faux corset look but I don't know if there's a good way to combine like this with this I just don't really think that would work I'm tempted to try it but I don't think it would work because it would wind up being way too large up here because that's the thing this one curves in a whole ton up at the top so it is actually narrower at the top so yeah I think I'm just gonna stick with the gunny socks the back by the way is completely different I didn't remember that the gunny socks bodice is a darted bodice in the back whereas the summer dress bodice is actually a two-piece bodice it's like a princess seam so yeah again very very different although I do think princess seams have gorgeous lines I think just for consistency's sake I'm going to stick with the gunny socks bodice all the way around so I decided not to do a mock-up because I've used this pattern so recently. So I have now cut out all of the pieces in the actual fabric and also in some black cotton sateen. And I flatlined them all together using the serger. And then of course the center front is out of the orange. So right now I was trying to figure out how to put this together so that this would look kind of faux corsety. And I think what I'm determining to do is instead of the normal half inch seam allowance that I would do here, I'm gonna do a smaller one. I think. I'll see if I can get away with a quarter inch, otherwise maybe three eighths inches. But then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually press this further down so that I basically get an overlap that looks like it's legitimately overlapped on top of this. And then I'll just have it tacked down in places where the lacing will be. So I'm trying to decide what lacing to use. <laughs> you know I love velvet ribbon. That was one of my ideas. Or I also have this little like soutache braid that I thought was a neat texture. So I'm playing around Around with that and I'm just going to like sew it back and forth in kind of that crisscross manner to do that but that will happen once the bodice is assembled so let's go ahead and assemble the bodice well I was really hoping to get more done today than just this but obviously the lacing is now all on hopefully it looks right when I go to actually put this on since I haven't tried it on yet but I do like the look of the soutache on here I think that that looks really good my bow is way too long at the moment but that'll get trimmed once I make sure that it's all well and dandy oh and one other thing that I forgot to mention is that I decided to do the binding on this a little bit differently I actually applied the binding 
bonding to the top front section right here before I even attached it to the side fronts. And I'm going to stitch this down by hand in here and then I'll bind this separately when I do the rest of the neckline. But I feel like that's gonna give a much cleaner look up here in the corner as opposed to where it can sometimes get a little rough. By the way, I do think that in hindsight, I probably should have just stitched it all the way and like pressed the seam because I don't feel like it looks much different to have that little lip underneath. There's like an eighth of an inch that's underneath and yeah I'm a little bit worried that it's just going to pull open like that. So I guess we'll see once I have it on but I will see you tomorrow and we will finish this bodice and put the ruffle on the dress. So it's been a couple of days that the skirt has been hanging out on the dress form now and I don't know how obvious it is to you. I'm going to try to get a different view but do you see how like this section right here how it looks lower and longer than the rest this is the bias this is a seam right here and so what I'm going to do now is basically I'm going to measure this seam to make sure that it's the same as like all of the center points of each panel and most likely it's not because I'm pretty sure it's dropped quite a bit on this and then I'll kind of have to just measure until the point where it does get to be the same and then the rest of whatever's excess will just get chopped off on each corner. So I've just applied the band to the bottom of the skirt after evening off those bias points. I took about half an inch to three quarters of an inch in some of those places. So I've now applied the band. It was just right sides together. And then I pressed it down nicely right here. But I was thinking like, it would look so cute. A little bit of trim up in there but I won't know for certain that that's where I want it until I add the ruffle so I think I'm gonna go ahead and add the ruffle first and to do that I'm going to divide up the ruffle piece into like each half section and I'm gonna divide up these into each quarter section and that way I'll have marks to line up with and then I can put the ruffle on and then I can decide if I want to put this lace luckily I have a ton of it I don't know how it is that I seem to forget that ruffles take four freaking ever to do, but the ruffle is finally on the skirt. I really am loving how this is looking with the orange band on there. I still am not positive if I want to be adding the lace detail or not. I think I need to see it kind of like all together. The other thing that I'm still not positive about is sleeves. So it is supposed to be up to 83 degrees today. Tomorrow it's supposed to drop down into the mid 70s when I'm going to go take these pictures of this finished look. Uh, but that's like as low as it's going through mid-October in the Pacific Northwest, which is ridiculous and I am so sick of this weather. Oh my god. Thank you, climate change, can we not? So yeah, I still don't know whether I add sleeves because normally I would do a long sleeve on a gunny sacks dress. I suppose I could do this as a short sleeve version, but then of course, if I wanna wear this after, you know, it gets cooler like through November because this is still very autumnal and appropriate for November, who knows what it's gonna be then. So like making it a jumper dress, I could have the option of, you know, short sleeve underneath or long sleeve underneath. But I do love how it looks when you have like the big puffy sleeves and I was going to do it out of the orange and I thought that was going to look really cute. So I think I'm going to keep waffling about that for another like hour. And in the meantime, I am going to combine the bodice with the skirt and put the zipper in the back. I think I mentioned this before, but I did already bind the neckline other than right where the zipper goes. So that will just like bind over the zipper once I put that in. But yeah, I think I'm gonna do all of that and then probably try it on and see A, sleeves or no sleeves. And if I do sleeves, short sleeve or long sleeve. And B, if I wanna add the lace because once these are joined together, it's just those two things left and I'm gonna finish this tonight. Okay, so obviously the bodice is now together with the skirt. I realized as I was about to put the zipper in that this was seeming like a little bit on the tight side. And there's kind of two flip sides to having something that's a little too tight with like putting a zipper in versus not putting a zipper in. On one hand, if you have something that is quite tight, Obviously, it's going to be very difficult to do up a zipper, especially an invisible zipper, and you are also going to get tension on that zipper and make it more likely to, like, break apart in the zipper where you have the tension in, like, in the waist. 
The flip side, of course, is that although I have squeezed myself into this right now, because I did not put the zipper in, I decided to do a test to see what it would be like to not put the zipper in. I don't know how easily this is going to come off. So that will be the question when I take this off. Can I do without a zipper? Because obviously like having the ability to undo the zipper to take it off is great, but having the zipper in there, again, it will have weakness where there's more strain because it is definitely a little tight at the waist seam. Like most likely, no matter what, even if I am able to do this without a zipper, I will probably take out a little bit of the seam allowance in the back because what I did is I literally, like I'd already joined together the bodice with the skirt. I had the back opening ready for the zipper. I was about to put it in. I'd already like pressed open the zipper and everything. And then I was like, hmm, let's just test the fit by not putting the zipper in and see how it works. So I did that and here we are. The other thing that I am able to tell from this testing is that considering what the weather is doing, I'm not adding sleeves to this, at least not yet. Maybe in November I will go ahead and add sleeves to this, but like this is freaking cute. I know you can't see the bottom of it right now. There we go, if I get far enough away. This is freaking cute. This is like Halloween dirndl and I am loving it. In fact, the only thing that I wish is that I had done this neckline, because I did this for my typical like wintry, cool weather, you know, gunny socks type dress. I wish I had lowered it a little, and it's possible that maybe I still will because I bound it separately from this. I could probably actually lower it quite easily. I just have to redo the binding on this one section. So I very well might because I feel like having it right here would be super cute and a little bit more derndly than what it is right now. But I love the lacing that I did on here. I think I picked the right lacing. I have way too much. I have to cut some off. But I picked the right stuff and it just looks so cute. I am loving the derndleness of this. So I am going to put bias tape around the arm size right now and just bind that. So it'll get a little bit narrower here because I'll just make the seam allowance go away. But this is going to stay a jumper. And uh, I guess I'll see in a moment when I go to take this off, whether this will be a jumper with a zipper or without a zipper. Oh, but before I take it off, the other thing that I've decided is that with it not having sleeves right now, I'm also not going to add the lace around the skirt because right now that would be the only place that I could add the lace. Whereas I was thinking with sleeves, I could add it around the cuff as well. So it may be that by the time I do decide to like add sleeves and stuff like that, assuming that I do, that I will then add lace also like around the skirt and everything. But yeah, for now, no skirt. So let's see if I can take this off.
So overall, I am very, very happy with how this dress came out. I did, by the way, this morning before I went and I took all of that footage, I did go and I lowered the front right here. I think I turned it in by about like three quarters of an inch lower. I wound up actually taking off the bias strip, cutting the little slit in the middle more because when you do a sweetheart and you fold it, you need to do that. And then just folding it twice and stitching it down by hand. So that was good. I did also wind up uh, taking out the center back seam by like a tiny bit. I think it overall made it maybe a quarter or three eighths inch wider or, you know, like larger around at the waist. Um, but it went on just fine over my head. We'll see how it is when it comes off again, especially with this lipstick on. But it fits very, very comfortably. I think it looks super flattering. Loving the super full skirt. And I guess we'll see you know, if I decide to put the sleeves on or not, it worked out really well today. Like when we first started at the park today, it was actually a little cooler. It was nice. It almost felt like fall. And then the sun came out and it got hot again. So I was glad that I had just like very lightweight little sheer sweater here. Um, but I think that it also gives so much versatility when you do make a jumper dress, which is why I have so many jumper dresses that I have in my wardrobe and have made on this channel now because they're just so versatile. But I just love how like witchy it is, how cottage quarry it is, how dirndly it is, and how gunny sacks it is. So it kind of fits like all of those and you know is perfectly autumnal and fall and pumpkin-y and all of that. So yeah, very, very happy with how this came out. I can tell that I'll be wearing this a lot, especially this fall season, but honestly probably the rest of the year as well because you know, why not bring a little pumpkin spice to your life? So overall, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Kofi down in the description below, or you can send me a super thanks right here on YouTube. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon and Mirage. And also thank you so, so much again to Brooklinen for sponsoring this video. Remember, you can use my code LadyRebecca20 to save $20 off of your first purchase of $100 or more. Highly recommend those linen sheets. And honestly, the Lux Cotton also just love them both. They're beautiful. So thank you so, so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful week and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!